Do you have complete control over your life? Or is it predetermined by an unseen weaver of fate? If you were a Viking of the Norse, you would likely believe your fate was decided by a trio of mysterious beings called Norns. In Norse mythology, the Norns held complete control over every thread of life, intertwining them and snipping them short as they saw fit. Even the Norse gods were subject to the wills of the Norns. Join me, Greybeard, on this episode of Greybeard's Jewels, Step Into the Unknown, to explore the hidden world and workings of the Norns below the tree of Yggdrasil. One constant theme throughout the history of humankind is the quest for meaning. Across the globe, every civilization has untangled the unknown web of life through its spiritual beliefs, stories, and myths. The ancient North Germanic people were no exception, and they gave birth to the Norse mythology that would travel throughout Scandinavia during the Viking Age. Stemming from Norse paganism, the mythology of the Scandinavian people consists of tales of various deities, beings, and heroes. These mythic entities have been woven through literature, culture, and art. It was the Norse who gave us Thor, the hammer-wielding god of thunder, and his one-eyed father, Odin, who bestowed knowledge upon humans through the gift of runic alphabet. Those two alone would spur an entire comic series, complete with a movie franchise depicting the conflicts of Asgard. But beyond a source of inspiration for Marvel, Norse mythology provided an explanation for the structure of the very universe. It told that all beings lived in nine worlds centered around the cosmological tree Yggdrasil. The nine worlds were home to gods, humans, elves, dwarfs, and the ambiguous Yoltum. Each one rests among the branches and roots of Yggdrasil. As a result, the well-being of the entire cosmos depends on the well-being of the Yggdrasil itself. When the tree trembles, it signals the arrival of Ragnarok, the destruction of the universe. Central to Norse mythology is the plights of the gods and their interactions with other beings. What we know today about Norse mythology comes primarily from texts created in Iceland where the oral traditions were collected and recorded during the 13th century. The prose Edda and the Poetic Edda and the sagas and runic inscriptions present the Norse collection of gods, goddesses, heroes, and giants in varied stories. Though we typically tend to think of the gods and goddesses as the most powerful among the entities in Norse mythology, that distinction belongs to the Norns. The Norns are something much older and more powerful than Odin himself. The Norns decide the fate of every living being, even the gods. They are the weavers of the threads of life, intertwining destinies and snipping lives to an end with their scissors. The Norns, names and numbers are a subject of some debate, but are typically represented as a trio of females, Erd, Verdandi, and Skald or the past, the present, and what shall be. The trio of female Norns lives in a hall beneath the mighty tree Yggdrasil, watering its branches with buckets brought from the Eurorbrum, the well of fate. The Norns crafting of fate is depicted differently through Old Norse literature, with the three most common showing the Norns casting wooden lots, weaving a piece of cloth, and carving runes into wood. Whatever their way of deciding the fates of each being, the Norns appeared unwavering in their decisions, with no evidence that they were worshipped or prayed to. Their threads were absolute and unchangeable. Even for the gods, the fate created by the Norns was blind and utterly implacable. In skaldic poetry, the Norns appear when King Hafton is put to rest by his men at Barrow. The judgment of the Norns described in the poem represents death, the final and inevitable decision the Norns can make for human life. The Poic Edda presents the Norns as numerous, with many lesser Norns besides the three central weavers, 
It suggests that the three main Norns were giantesses, with the lesser Norns being of the race they control the fates of. Fafnir spake, Of many births the Norns must be, nor one in race they were. Some to gods, others to elves are ken, and Valen's daughters some. Several mentions of the Norns suggest that they came to protect humankind, ending the early days of bliss for the gods. The Norns visited each newborn child to give them their fate, as told in a poem about the hero, Helgi Hundingsbane. T'was the night in the dwelling, and Norns there came, who shaped the life of the lofty one. They bade him most famed of fighters, all and best of princes ever to be. Mightily wove they the web of fate, while Brawlon's towns were trembling all. And there the golden threads they wove, And in the moon's hall fast they made them. East and west the ends they hid, In the middle the hero should have his land, And Neri's kinswoman northward cast a chain, And bade it firm ever to be. But perhaps the very best description of the Norns Comes from the prose Edda. In one part the king of Sweden has arrived at Valhalla, where he is given an education in Norse mythology by none other than Odin himself, in the form of three men. They explain to the king that there are three main Norns and many others. A hall stands here, fair, under the ash by the well, and out of that hall come three maids, who are called thus, Erder, Verdandi, Skald. These maids determine the period of men's lives, we call them Norns, but there are many Norns, those who come to each child that is born to appoint his life. These are the race of the gods, but the second are the elf people, and the third are the kindred of the dwarfs. The passage continues with a description of the caretaking of Yggdrasil. It is further said that these Norns who dwell by the well of Erdur take water of the well every day, and it that clay which lies about the well, and sprinkle it over the ash, to the end that its limbs shall not wither or rot, for that water is so holy, that all things which come there into the well become as white as the film which lies within the eggshell. Some of the legendary sagas of Norse mythology also reference the Norns, typically in hero or god's frustrated lament at the cruelty of the Norns web of fate. In the more recent recorded sagas, the Norns shift from being all-powerful masters of destiny to a simpler, more misogynistic depiction of evil witches. There are also mentions of attempts to influence the Norns in newer texts, and references to good and bad Norns, illustrating a belief that Norns could be corrupted somehow. As such, there are tales of serving a special meal of Norn porridge to women who just gave birth as an offering to the Norns in hopes they would bless the mother and her child with good health. The belief in Norns was one of the last vestiges of Norse paganism to disappear after the Christianization of Scandinavia. A runic inscription found on the Borgen Stav Church in Norway reads, Porer carved these runes on the eve of Olas' mass as he traveled past here. The Norns presented measures of good and evil, great toil, they created before me. The Norns were a Norse variation on a prevalent mythological archetype. Greek mythology had its own three goddesses of fate, the Morari. So did the Romans, who called them Parsi, or sometimes Tafada. In Slavic mythology, a group of three goddesses determined each child's fate when it was born. In the Baltic, the Dees, Baudi Tojos, or governing goddesses, were also weavers, seven women who made cloth from the threads of people's lives. The theme of three goddesses linked to fate, birth, or death is seen in the Celtic Matrones, the Irish Morrigan, and the Hutina of the Hurans. Shakespeare's three witches in Macbeth hold a striking resemblance to the weavers of fate. In more modern examples, the presence of three crafters of destiny has cropped up in the works of Neil Gaiman, Rick Riordan, 
and Piers Anthony. They are seen in the God of War video game series and Hadestown the musical. They've been depicted in art by painters throughout history and many examples of them hang in museums around the world. Even within the face, there are different understandings of the amount of control an individual has over their own life. Is it of more comfort to believe weavers are pulling the strings while we make the most of the ride? Or is it better to have complete control of our destinies, to be responsible for each circumstance that befalls us, good or bad? Are the dates of our death written in stone? Or can we make choices that alter them? Can our destinies be changed, bribed, or prayed for? The Norns were a way of grappling with those questions for the Norse people, to provide meaning to circumstances that seemed out of their control. And if we only look around us, we can still see attempts to do the same today. I'd like to take a few minutes to let everybody know what was going on, why we've been gone for so long, and things like that. Okay, we only have one vehicle, and it needed work done on it. We couldn't find anybody to get us up there to drop our vehicle off to get it worked on and get it back. Aunt Kathy and Uncle Tom, I want to thank you guys so much for really helping us. They, um... They don't like coming out with the COVID and stuff like that and that, but they really helped us out. Uncle Tom came out, drove us up there, made sure we got back home safe and everything. And then when the car was fixed, he took us up there and made sure to, that we got back home with the car and everything else. And I want to say a big thank you to them for that. That was very nice. Also, their daughter, Tracy, thank you. She came out after working and ran my wife up to the store and stuff like that so she could get her medicine and stuff while we didn't have the car. I just want to say thank you very much for that. That was so nice of you guys to help us like that. We really appreciate everything you guys did. You know, we had a lot of things going on. That's part of the reason why we haven't had any podcasts out lately and stuff. The other reason is uh, I had a little scare this past Friday. I uh, had some afibulation, atrial fibrillation, something like that. Anyways, my heart was doing about 140, and my blood pressure was down to about 54 over 40. So I had to take a little ride in the ambulance, <laughs> and I went to... University Hospital's Illyria Medical Center. That's actually the place I was born. It was called Illyria Memorial Hospital back then, but they were phenomenal there. Uh, I mean, yeah, it was, it was packed because of COVID and stuff like that, but they were just phenomenal. I did end up getting a room on the fifth floor, Stymie, I think is the name of it. The nurses up there were just incredible. I can't remember all their names. I know there was a person named Chad, and I'm not even going to try to say a name because I'm not I'm not sure what her name was. can't remember. I should have wrote it down. And then when I got discharged, Stacy Brenner, Bruner, I'm sorry if I messed your last name up. Bruner, I think, is how it's pronounced. And Connie, you guys went above and beyond. I mean, they called me, made sure I was all right, if I had any questions, because they put me on some medicine for my heart to control it and stuff like that. And I didn't get no parameters with that medicine, and I was scared. I, I'm not going to lie to you guys. This this really scared me. This was the first time anything major has happened to me. I've been very fortunate in my life. And uh, as you guys who know me know, I've smoked for 37 years and stuff like that. And I haven't had a cigarette since or anything else for that matter. Um, But 
I was able to talk to both of them, and they contacted my heart doctor, Dr. Diaz, and got with him and made sure he got back with me and explained to me about the medicines and, you know, how they work and made me feel a lot more at ease and stuff like that. And I just want to thank all you guys. I really do. So anyways, that's what's been going on. And, uh, yeah, I think we may be back now. Might change the name on the podcast to just Greybeard's Jewels or maybe Greybeard, something I don't know yet. And it is with a heavy heart that I say that our YouTube channel, we're not going to be pursuing that anymore for right now. So we're just going to be doing the podcast. I'm going to try to get another podcast going. Uh, The name of that's going to be Greybeard's Tales. And I really do like doing the podcast. I like doing the YouTube too, but it's, it's, it's just a little too much right now. And we need to focus on some things and that. And I'm not ruling out the possibility that later on down the road we get back on the YouTube again. But for now, we're just going to take a break and just concentrate on the podcast. So, that's what's been going on, and I just want you guys to know I appreciate you, and thanks for listening to Greybeard's Jewels, a step into the unknown.